Good morning, oh lovely people. This is Mark J. Aquaviva um, with your weekly Yoga Solutions Live broadcast. Um, so, yes, hi. Um, I, I'm a bit coldy today, so apologies if um, I suddenly go into a sneezing fit. It might be entertaining, but, um, but we'll see. Um, so, uh, what... What to share whilst uh, people, whilst we, I wait for people to jump on. Um, I have, hi Kishori, I have, nice to see you. Um, this weekend coming, uh, the 2nd and 3rd of December, is it? Uh, on the 2nd of December, there is a rather special event in on the Isle of Wight with um, Abigail Peck. She's running a CPD for, for body workers and uh, anyone that's interested in pregnancy, Pre uh, uh, how to be with the body. A pregnant body um, uh, yes it, it's invaluable CPD she understands the conditions that makes it absolutely safe for um, anyone coming along to a class including pregnant people so um, if you can make the if you can get to the Isle of Wight this this Saturday at the Isle of Yoga it's Erling's place he's a he's one of our teachers um, rather special himself uh, yes that's on Saturday the 2nd of December. On the 3rd of December, I'm up at Hart Twickenham with uh, the, lov the lovely people there. Uh, it's hosted by Tuesday McNeil. I don't think she'll be there, so Andriana will be hosting it for, it, for me. Um, and, uh, yeah, she's one of our teachers too. And, um, yes, that's a, that's a group, and we just sort of get on with whatever people are interested in. Um, that's on the Sunday, the 3rd of December, is there anything else going on? I think that's pretty much it for the year. We've just got our courses running until um, up until the new year. So January, uh, we've got, I'm launching the January courses with um, a weekend workshop that I share with Pete Blackaby. He, he takes the Saturday, I take the Sunday. And we're, we're doing applied yoga or humanistic philosophy. Pete, uh, Peter prefers to work with uh, sort of humanistic principles, and um, and I like to work with yoga principles, which to me are the same. Um, so uh, and yeah, we're working on the the fundamental principles of yoga, the you know how to apply principles to practice to gain the results that, that um, you're looking for, um, and that'll be there'll be a weekend down in Brighton and one up in Edinburgh. I don't know how many places I haven't even started advertising yet because it's it's um, it's, it's like the first weekend for our course students, but there are, um, because of the way we run our courses, there are a few um, spaces on, on this sort of starter weekend. So if, um, yes, if you're interested in that in January, I'll be posting details soon. I'm sorry there's no details, uh, booking details up there yet. I just haven't had time. Um, that's about it. Um, so let's get on with the broadcast, what we got here then. So... I know Kishore is here, nice to see you, and tension in leg muscles, calf muscles when walking, especially up and downhill. Okay, uh, well, leg muscles, calf muscles, there's, there's, there's quite a few layers to that. Um, if you're using your feet well, then um, there are some deep muscles along the, behind the calves, deeper than, deeper than the calves themselves that do the job. Um, if it's all in the superficial calf muscles, then um, the feet are too floppy. And and when 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 you use the deeper foot muscles, toe muscles, that sort of thing, um, then you get stronger structural support when you're walking. Leg muscles. If you're talking about the thighs, it's because the the hips are not working enough. It, it's not about muscles, and uh, it, it just isn't. We we tend to treat the body as a as a sort of a meat machine. And when we experience um, some of that musculature working, uh, whether it's whether we consider it tension or strength, um, kind of depends on our relationship to it rather than what's actually happening. Muscles, uh, understanding muscles uh, is not really where it's at. It's... Um, it's an interesting. It's an interesting sort of way of objectifying the body, uh, but it's not how we move. We we, we don't move by organising muscles. Uh, what what we what, how we move is through intent. 
we intend to move and the, the, the brain fires off patterns of um, signals, not, not just a single neuron per muscle. A neuron creates a whole pattern of um, responses that follow, and that, that's the stuff that we learn when we learn to move. Um, I, I, I picked that up from uh, uh, some research that uh, Pete Blackaby discovered. Um, what am I saying with this? I mean, I'm trying to, uh, we all experience our bodies in this fashion, you know, uh, the, te the tension in particular muscles, when there is a complication in what we are doing. That's how we experience it. We kind of, sep we, we find a complication, so we separate from the experience and we treat it as something outside of ourselves. The, the muscles work. <laughs> muscles engage to, to perform tasks. It's the tasks and the way we engage with those tasks that determines what muscles we use. You can't really work it out um, because you will, if you're task orientated, you will use muscles. What you can do is, is get involved in the task and try and remove anything that feels like conflict. And in the process, you will um, learn that sometimes muscles have to work um sometimes it's unfamiliarity that makes muscles feel tense you know there are plenty of muscles that are working all the time you don't even notice and it's because um we, you're familiar with it so um tension in leg muscles calf muscles when walking I, I don't know what to say about that really apart from if it's not pleasant if it's draining you of energy then you need to find more efficient ways of doing it which is nothing to do with muscles um, not not in those terms. It's not. It's nothing to do with avoid and avoidance of uh, tension, either, or, or anything like that. It's to do with using your bones, using structure, using the your efforts, whatever efforts you do get involved with, to support you through your feet, through your toes, through your bones, through your core, through your spine, and out into space. And uh, that may or may not feel like tension. Depends on your interpretation of the sensations. Um, okay, so <laughs> anyway, there's a, a lot of talk. Um, <clears throat> uh, anyway, let's, let's see what else we've got here. Making space in the middle of the body without puffing out the chest. Okay, whole body expansion, connected, grounded, finding middle age, mental collapse, this disturbingly attractive when not being conscious. What? I've got to show this because I, I don't know what is being said. Uh, making space in the, without puffing out the chest. I understand that bit. Whole body expansion connected to ground, yes, good. Finding middle-aged, middle collapse, disturbingly attractive when not being conscious. I don't understand that bit, Feeney. <laughs> um, okay, well, uh, I'll include that, I think. Uh, I'll include something around the, the spaciousness. Uh, I'll include about how to release tension in the legs, if I can. Debra, how I guided you into tree with Sikari breath. Um, that was a previous moment in a workshop. Uh, it's about the same stuff that everyone else is talking about. It's about for having space without puffing up. Um, Sikari is a, is a technique, it's a practice. It's a pranayama, and you can, you can do it here. Uh, everyone, let's try it. I, I'll get on to Gail's question in a second. Um, Sikari is, um, I, I find the pranayamas onomatopoeic and I'm, I'm going for, for working this uh, pranayama um, because it sort of answers a couple of the first of the uh, a couple of the questions so far so uh, Sikari so it's a breathing practice I find the pranayamas quite onomatopoeic if you want to understand the pranayama see if you can find the onomatopoeia of it um, if you inhale the breath making the sound seat uh, with a, it's a sort of gentle smile uh, on your face <laughs> and it's making the sound through your teeth gently it's it's sort of what you would do if you got good news and and it's described as a breath that resonates across the heart and uh, I, I feel it to, to be like a smile across the heart up into the shoulders uh, good morning Jill uh, I'm just running through seat Kari um, I feel it as an arrival of the breath that smiles across the heart and up into the shoulders. Uh, and then to allow the arms to get involved with that, um, you sort of continue the movement out through your 
uh, arms as if they are wings. And uh, if you grab hold of a wrist, it helps you relax the shoulders, even though they are widening um, away from you. Okay. So if you grab hold of a wrist, relax, um, yeah, relax the shoulders wide and make the sound seat as if you'd receive good news. As if breathing across the heart and into the elbows, uh, into the wings. And then um, it's a retention breath. All, all pranayamas are on some level. Um, having having a, allowed the breath to arrive with that sort of celebratory sound, uh, let it go because I've talk too long. So let's do it again. Seat. With the widening from the across the shoulders, it, it needs to be a whole body action. Okay. Seat. And you kind of retain the breath high and wide. So it's not a, um, it's not a holding of the breath with tension. Okay. It's a widening. And then the release of the breath wants to be away from the space that that creates. Okay. And um, so it's a sense of leaving or supporting yourself from your hanging arms and releasing the breath away from it. Ka, seat ka. Uh, nice cup of tea is the expression I sometimes use. And you may notice that the ribs kind of fall away from the action. Um, I can't really do it, do it in standing, the camera's not set up, so uh, you can do it. I'll, I'll kneel, and you can, you can stand if you prefer. Um, same action. Actually, if you if you if you all join me in kneeling, uh, we can turn this in to show you how this works with dog pose. Okay. So um, if instead of we're not holding the arms up with tension in the shoulders, we're using the hands always. Always use your hands and feet in some fashion for support if you can, even if they're in space. Okay. So you're, we're using the hands to relax the shoulders, so the shoulders can relax wide, and then the breath arriving as an expression of that seat. You retain that for a moment because you want to, you don't want to drop that space away as you release the breath. So you, you retain the breath for a little while and whilst you work out how to gather in around it. And the, the sound k of kari helps you find the gathering in. Okay, so seat. There's a gathering in that is a bit like the holding of the breath and then you release the breath um, inside of that. It needs to be a release down to your base and a release of tension so that the ribs fall away from things. And that, and that sort of, um, one more time. So seat, retain whilst you float and gather in the middle away from it. And then the nice cup of tea sound. In that moment, just put your hands down and let your knees come off the ground. Because you should find um, a bit more space. It's a little trick I do to help people um, feel things differently. Um, so I don't know if that uh, that uh, that reminds you anyway, um, Deborah. It doesn't matter whether it's tree or dog pose or anything. It's a reminder of the pranayama. And it goes a little way to answering Feeney's question. How to make space in the middle of the, the body without puffing out the chest. Well, first of all, um, the... The pranayama itself doesn't do it, okay? It's the um, wholehearted engagement with the somatic content of it, or the, the emotional content of it, the, the cheerfulness of it, <sighs> you know? Because when, when the whole body engages with these things, what happens is the spaciousness that you're talking about um, uh, yeah, the spaciousness you're talking about, making space in the middle of the body, um, it's, uh, it's in the lungs. That's where, that's where we need the space, okay? To get that space, it's, um, it's a sort of a freedom. We, 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 uh, space, it's, we're not talking about volume. We're talking about the freedom to receive the breath. And rather um, interestingly, the space that we gain isn't when we're holding the breath in. Uh, that puts us in a position where we are fully receiving the breath, okay? where we're not um, restricting the breath with the shoulder muscles or restricting the breath with um, holding ourselves down. You know, 
it puts us in a position to receive the breath when we are retaining the breath. But the release of the breath away from that, the release of the breath away from that position in space is the ribs gathering in together away from the wings. So what you're left with is a spaciousness between the rib cage and the shoulders. Um, the, the lungs have emptied towards the center. So there's a spaciousness between the inside of the rib cage and your heart and your spine. You know, it's a, it's a roundabout way of seeing things. It's not how we see things with the, um, when we're looking from the outside. It's, uh, it's an inside out way of seeing things. You create space by collecting yourself together away from space, not by stretching. Uh, you can try it one more time. So uh, it doesn't have to be this position. It could be any position. You could maybe try sitting, try sitting, turning. Okay, so uh, be, always be with your hands and feet. Always be with the quality of touch to make it functional. And uh, then uh, what's touch for? It's, it's for support. It's for support. It's for interaction with your environment. It's for, um, it's for receiving things. It's, um, you know, you have to be with your touch to get any genuine um, body responses. So if you're with your touch and actually I'm just looking at Gail's question. Spasms. In, okay, here we go. It's the same area. It's always the way. Um, she's talking about uh, spasms in the trapezius muscles. Forget about the muscles. The muscles are doing a job. Um, they're spasming because, I don't know, they have too much work to do. This will sort it out for you. Okay. But what we need to do is, if you want the surface muscles to let go, you need to work deeper. And then the surface doesn't have to hang on so hard. Okay. So here we are. Um, let's turn to one side. Use the... Be with your touch, be connected to your touch for support, for um, sort of interactive engagement, for receiving. Mm? Be with your touch. And from that touch, you sort of widen, but it's across the heart and across the shoulders. And you do that with your limbs. You do that by being in space, by widening. And the, the widening action actually brings the spine itself, especially the bump of the base of the neck, closer to your touch and it's it's that um, movement of the spine through the wings that takes the strain out of the local muscles uh, the superficial muscles of the trapezius okay go so by working at a deeper level you'll, you'll feel muscles underneath the shoulder blades if you like or um, that's even that's too superficial underneath that you have uh, muscles between uh, between ribs, between ribs and spine, that can do the job so that the wings can be free, you see. Um, and what we need to do is to be broad across the tops of the wings and you use your limbs for that. You widen with the limbs and those deeper muscles will be involved. You breathe it with the sound seat, that's the pranayama. The retention gives you a moment to work out how to float. The retention of the breath allows you to organize this space that we are retaining um, over the center of your base. And as you hold that spaciousness, there'll be support developing below and above. There'll be support developing um, the gathering in below the heart, the That it's described by the the, the consonant of the, of the sound car of seat cardi. So seat wide, stay wide as you release the breath. The, with a release away from your wings with the sound car. And if it's a natural release, you should find the ribs working quite firmly to gather themselves together and drop through where your base is. If you can make that association, then it'll be the centered breath, the gathering in breath that gives you the space above. It'll be the collecting in below around the upward releasing diaphragm when you release the breath. Um, that gives you the 
togetherness that brings you into your spine. But when you allow the breath in, you don't have to puff this up because you have space above the heart. And it feels like it's more in your throat, perhaps, or in your skull. You have space below um, the chest, uh, not directly in the solar plexus. It's below that, in, in, uh, behind the, between the navel and the lumbar spine, for example. And you might, you might find other tensions going on, but they don't need to restrict the breath, especially uh, pelvic floor is another one. Okay? You can leave the pelvic floor alone. Um, so wide seat. You can imagine this at both ends. You can be wide between your thighs as well with the sound seat. Retain for a moment so you find the, the central kind of support of that. And it's got the quality of the consonant. And when you find that um, central support that allows you to retain the space of the breath, then you simply release the breath. And where does it release? It's not so much outwards, it's the pressure releases inwards towards the center. See, and when you find support elsewhere, uh, Gail, you should notice that your trapezius muscles, superficial muscles, haven't been um, relied on to carry the weight of dead shoulders or dead shoulders. You know? You're not using them to hold yourself up, nor are you hanging off them as you rest out. Instead, you'll have a more central, central um, relationship from the spine, seat, and a more centered relationship to the release of the breath and your touch. So that it's the core of the body that um, the central breathing mechanism around the diaphragm and the lower ribs and abdomen. And the, and the, the release of the breath, the, the breathing muscles in the upper spine as well, in the upper ribs. It's all the central stuff working to uh, breathe and release towards around the central axis that leaves you free in these superficial muscles. Um, the same is true, Kishori, um, the same is true for when you're walking. Okay, so it, instead of hauling your body's weight up the hill um, with the leg muscles, if you have this sort of core gathering away from the legs and if you have a core gathering away from the wings the central uh, breathing pulsing breathing place of support um solar plexus between the between the solar plexus and the and the and the bump of the base of the neck is somewhere in the heart okay this this gathered place this place that you're centering towards away from the earth and away from space um kind of takes all the weight out of the legs and the, uh, and then the use of the limbs then becomes much lighter. I haven't really got, I haven't got time to try it out, but um, I don't know, maybe if you, if you get, get your question in um, again next week, I'll, I'll, maybe I'll apply the same stuff to that. Um, so uh, that, that's it, I think. Uh, I'm out of time as always. Uh, I seem to uh, fill the time very quickly. Uh, I hope that was useful. Um, yes, I, I'll just reiterate. Uh, it, I know I, I seem to be going into deeper areas of practice on, on these Facebook lives these days. I would like to know if um, the information is still useful because it kind of relies on relies on being able to engage with the practice. Um, I, I I recommend that you try following what I'm saying, even if you haven't got a clue what I'm talking about. Um, because it's the investigation into these things that I mean, that, that I'm talking about. It's, it's investigation into the meaning of the things that I'm talking about that help you discover for yourself what I'm, what I'm talking about. Um, you, it's not something to understand through the head and then apply to the body. Uh, if, you, if you're spending any time trying to translate it's a very, very slow process, and it will be limited to that which you understand already um, from what you've learned. If you can explore something of what I'm talking about directly without necessarily knowing what I mean, 
then your exploration of the meanings of the words will be a physical one and so it will be your body talking to you that informs you it's it seems like a um but potentially a, a, a pedantic differentiation but it's it's so pivotal it's not the mind imposing on the body it's the mind immersing in the body and recognizing that which is useful and how you experience it how you describe it will be quite possibly entirely different to the way i get you there okay so um and that, that goes for anyone that wants to was interested in joining one of my courses I, I'm, I'm not interested in um getting anyone to teach like me um all, all i'm interested in is is in guiding people through uh, a process that will take them directly to the authority of their own yoga and then if they are teachers or if they can if they're ready to teach if they want to teach if they want to share then that's where you share from and that's the most natural place to share from so um anyway um that'll do i think thank you so much for watching i hope that was useful if you if you found it of value please please do share it around facebook um if you if you can um if you can put it on on appropriate groups where they're interested in in movement and, and body work and yoga of course um that's great it, it looks a bit rubbish if i do it myself but if uh, if other people do it then um it, it, yeah i don't know it just um seems to seems to come across better so if you if you feel to share it then thank you very much i'll be eternally grateful any amount of spreading this work it makes me very happy so um yes maybe i'll see one or two of you at next weekend maybe abigail will get to see some of you down at the isle of wight and um Yes, I shall say namaste. I'm Mark J. Akraviva of the Akraviva School of Yoga signing off. I shall see you same time, same place next week. Goodbye. <laughs> okay, nearly there.